think when people look at his run, um, I, I think sometimes you can um, sort of uh, obsess over maybe some of the sort of asymmetry details, which in the grander scheme of things um, aren't as, you know, earth shatteringly important uh, as they potentially are made out to be by some, you know, opinionated coaches, you know, ultimately when you look at um, his running style, um, you know, he's definitely for want of a better phrase, a puller rather than a pusher. Um, Mm -hmm. simplistically, um, if you want to think about that in the context of if your job was to make the planet go round, then if you were a pusher, you would always do that by driving off your back foot, Mm -hmm. um, to make the earth spin. Uh, whereas a puller would almost pull at the ground with the lead leg. Um, but both of those have different. Uh, fascial and, bi- and and musculoskeletal implications, you know, Lionel is a little bit more of a puller than a pusher. Um, mm-hmm. And I think as a consequence, when you look at broadly at his run style, there's not a massive amount of vertical oscillation. So, mm-hmm. you know, I'm not saying he's a super efficient runner. I mean, I definitely think there's room for improvement, um, but I don't think it's the horror show that necessary that some people make out. Um, and so, you know, uh, would I be looking to improve Lionel's efficiency in the run? Absolutely. Um, mm. You know, how we go about that um, is is multifactorial. Yeah. Sometimes you can't cue anatomical dysfunction. You know, if it's anatomically, to, yeah, if it's anatomically impossible that. for Lionel to run with perfect symmetry, then why would I waste my time trying to get him to do that by trying to retrain his gait mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. you know yeah, i mean that's, um, that could be a huge a huge consequence with trying to do something like that yeah, it's, you know, a, it's, it's, a, not... it's a fast route to injury yeah very much so yep so yep. you have to understand yeah. context you know i i used to work with an, uh, i used to work with an athlete that had previously dislocated their hip um and um you know that you know, n- now impacts on their run mechanics. You know, Lionel was, I guess, kind of calmer individual, didn't have a moustache, just raced Cabo, <laughs> has a moustache, bit more swagger. I look at that and I say, you know, my job's done. Um, yeah. I told him to grow a moustache. I told him to have a bit more swagger. Um, and look where it got us. Um, no, I, I'm, I'm being, <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm being sarcastic, of course. Co- coaching um, through a fa- coaching facial hair. Uh, that's yeah, wonderful. Um, it's like a full, it's a full job. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> couture, yeah, couture. I have good couture skills. Um, no, no, <laughs> um, in, in all seriousness, um, uh, you know, you know, I, and I have been approached by, you know, six you know not just lionel but you know you know very successful athletes and um and and in anybody's situation i would you know whether they're age group or or professional i would you know look at it and say okay well you know what what do you feel you know you're the athlete you feel you know i'm the coach i see you know i see data i see subjective comments i see you move i see you swim i see you bike i see you run um you know what but what do you feel you know is is not right isn't working um and then you know what i'm feel i'm quite good at is then being somewhat of a solutionist and 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 looking at what they've maybe done in the past and saying okay is there a disconnect between what they've done in the past and what they clearly feel is a gap no, Lionel's perfectly coachable. I mean, I coached him for the whole of 2017, and you know the reason <laughs> we, the reason we stopped working together in 2017 is you know is is after Kona. Um, you know, we 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 had a bit of a contretemps, <laughs> and you know um, we ended up not working together. And and it's all good. It wasn't you know it wasn't anything that was a big deal. It was again, it just came down to communication. Um, yeah. Um, so yeah, I don't, I don't think he's uncoachable. I think, 
I think he, you know, uh, he's definitely not coachable if it was a dictatorship. Yeah. Um, and I don't think many professional athletes are male or female. I think, you know, the majority of professional athletes at a world-class level that I've worked with, they want to understand, they want, you know, they want you as the coach to create buy-in. You know, when you're dealing with age groupers and when you're dealing with people that are new to the sport, they, to an extent, they just want to be told what to do because it's new and it's exciting and it's just like, right, you know, yeah, what do I do? It's like, do this. Great, fantastic. I'm going to go and do it. Um, when you get to the pointy end of things, age group or pro, um, I think as a coach, you have to be able to create buy-in. Um, and, you know, sometimes creating that buy-in, you know, demands a need to understand the type of personality that you're working with. You know, I wouldn't, you know, I wouldn't communicate with Lionel the same way that I communicate with Leslie Smith. Um, that's not to say that I'm sort of being disingenuous and, and like, you know, somewhat chameleon, but, you know, I wouldn't treat them the same. They're different personalities. Yeah. So, 